Good morning, Nigeria. It's the Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV, where we have news on politics, sports, entertainment, and so much more. Did you know that we also have future stories where we talk about nothing but everything? It's the Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV. Welcome to the Weekend Rundown on TSN Nigeria TV. My name is Joyce Jukes and I have with me the amazing, the beautiful, the girl that's never given me money, Ejiro Omoegade. Good morning. Joyce, when will you done? give me money again? I'm greeting you. When? It's okay. When? I'll give you money. Uh -uh. When? has ended. Come down. Let's be serious. <laughs> Six months into the year and I'm nothing from you, dear. Joyce, happy new month too. I mean, I, I can't say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the weekend run down is please don't insult me. Uh, please, it's just money. It's money that we are doing now. Let's leave it like that. Please, good morning, people. Dollars, dear. Thank you. The weekend run down is the show where we give you the breakdown of some of the craziest things that happened this past week. Mm -hmm. And this past week, we concluded our uh, the first leg of our advanced into school Yay. debate competition, where it was girls grammar school came up on top. That was so amazing. Proud of them right yeah but moving away from that we have so many crazy stories but this week a lot of sad things happened yeah. so we have a lot of sad stories either way we're going to try to have some fun on the way my name is joyce jokes we'll be back after this very short break stick around Space TV and join our online family. And we're back like we never left. You know, every now and then, while we're giving you the weekend rundown of the top 10 craziest stories, we like to sneak in a bonus story, you know, something that was really close to making the cut but just didn't get there. Now, a couple of Nigerians who have identified themselves as Malians have been celebrating uh, the release on bail of a Nigerian musician, Naira Mali, <laughs> who was released on bail from his last bail hearing to the tune of 2 million Naira, providing two sureties in the same form. Mm. Adrian, hey, how do you feel about this release? Is it a win for the country? I'm not anywhere inside. I do not encourage bad things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to jump right now into the countdown, starting from a number 10. You know, when you're going to school, your parents always tell you to, you know, be careful of the people you roll with. Don't, Don't forget, you know, remember the child of who you are and many, many things. You know and then... from Joyce. <laughs> But they stop us. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> and then if you so happen to be going to school outside Nigeria, they always tell you to make sure you do not carry anything for anyone. Mm. What did the thing is just a pair of slippers? Ijiro has us covered in that story. And so apparently, a guy helps his friend to take a pair of slippers abroad. What happens? He finds Tramadol inside the slippers on his way to the airport. Now, this is funny because he. Apparently just said he should check the slippers and takes with a blade and he cuts open and then there it is, a pack of trauma. But why did his mind go to this story is somehow in my head? I mean, well, how will I give you my slippers to carry you know, it in there you know for me and you want to cut you know it? Saying, As a friend, I'm offended. Hold on. You know why don't saying, you trust wait, me? Wait, you know birds of a feather, they fly together. That you one had an idea. So <laughs> they should stop deceiving themselves that he did not know. Somewhere in his heart, he knew, just did not want to be caught. So maybe he was being a sharp guy. <laughs> Anyways, we want to be taking comments on the show, so please, uh, we're live right now on Facebook, TSN Nigeria TV. Go there, drop your comments, I'll be sure to take as many as possible. Now, moving into our number nine story, this one is not funny, but it might be funny if you have dark humor in you. Now, a lot of weird things happen on planes for some reason. We had a movie called Snakes on the Plane. I mean, why would snakes be on the plane? I don't know why snakes <sighs> would be on the plane, but it was a movie. Anyways, 
Um, I saw a video last week of a man that was smoking on an airplane. By the way, this could make the airplane combust and everybody would die. And he forgot where he was. He just lit the... I think it was not even a cigarette. I'm not even sure. And then he was like... <sighs> and then the guy in his name was like... <laughs> not the killers. <laughs> So crazy things actually happen on airplanes. But this one I'm telling you is quite shocking. Now, a man has died yeah. aboard an airplane. He was traveling from Mexico to Tokyo. He was a Japanese man. And according to the people on the flight, there were some sounds of somebody convulsing. And by the time they rushed to where he was, he had passed out. And then they found with him 264 packets of cocaine. cocaine in his body during the autopsy. It was sad. They did an autopsy and they found it inside his system. So apparently he overdosed himself. I mean, one or two packets. But 200. <laughs> I mean, 200, why? 266 packets. I, I think, I guess he was smuggling it because they were in bags. Yeah. One point and two centimeter big small packs in his system. I don't know how desperate he was, but I don't know if the plan was to die. Well, somebody is definitely not getting their delivery. Uh, yeah. That is, that is for sure. Uh, it, it's a sad story, but please do not push drugs. It's just, it doesn't drugs. end well. Let's move on like out to our number eight story. It's, it's not even sad. I feel like it's, it's bittersweet. It's happy, and then there's something in between. Now, um, I think a week or two ago, Game of Thrones finally yeah. came to an end. After people spent years of their lives just, you know, following and hoping that it gets better. And a lot of people did not love the ending. Yeah. A lot of people said it was people really poor. Some people just wanted them to make the entire season all over again. And some of the actors and actresses did share some of their stories, saying that it was quite draining for them to be um, through the movie and they were, they were happy that it was over. Now, one of the actors that really got a hard blow from it was Kit Harrington. Now, if you don't know who that is, Kit Harrington is your guy next door, Jon Snow. Ooh. Now, uh, Jon Snow has gone to rehab for stress and alcohol apparently shooting the entire season and the ending really was hard on him and so he has gone to rehab to treat himself for stress and alcohol so, so apparently is he now becoming a drug, drug addict and sorry alcoholic because of the stress i think he's getting better from being dependent on alcohol that is the idea behind rehabilitation I'm just wondering why someone would resort to alcohol as because a stress relief. People deal with stress in different ways. Some people go to the gym okay. and punch it out. Some people just get really moody and, you know, they kind of die inside from burnout. Some people do drugs. Okay. It just depends on how you want to cope with it. And if you find that your coping mechanism is a problem, it's immensely smart of you to seek help. Okay. I so, I, I don't know about it, Drew. I... I'm proud of you, Kit Harrington. I want oh, to make sure that you help. I'm just saying, you didn't have to resort to alcohol. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> Moving on to things that are happy go lucky, things that are offending me, but are also really, really happy. Mm. Now, a while ago, we had the story of one of the world's richest men, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, being caught cheating with his friend's wife. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, there were so many women in the world, but he was like, let's keep it in the family. And that's not keeping it in the family, that's betrayal. You say no, betrayal, I say keeping it in the family. No, no keeping it in the family, no benefit. Keeping it in the Enjoy family. Well. I mean, you don't have to go far. Not, not working. When your lover is just right next to your friend's house. Wow. Anyways, <laughs> now with the divorce, Mackenzie is supposed to be entitled to um, almost half of his entire fortune. And with the divorce getting concluded, she's getting $38 billion, oh my God. which made her the third richest woman in the world. But she was like, no. She's a very good woman. I don't want to be the third richest woman in the world. No, I don't like money. She likes money. She still has money. Well, she's given up almost half of that money to the tune of $17 billion to charity. Mm. It drew. Yes. In your no, heart. In my heart. Okay. What do you think about this? I believe in she's your a heart. very courageous woman. She's very bold. I don't know how she did it. Mm. She's very bold. And I'm sure the, ch the people she gave the money to would really be grateful. And I actually hope it goes to the charity. That's my own answer. No, there's a, something called a giving pledge. A couple of billionaires have joined it where they give off huge parts of their money. Bill Gates and his wife, I think they've already gave. I think Warren Buffet is also moving in that direction if he has already not done it. The idea is to help world poverty. 
Okay, so, so most likely well, it's been I, I, shared I, I, I in maybe foreign she, I, aid. I still think she's Somebody bold. will steal it. I think you know. she, she's bold. She has a big heart. I don't know how she did it, but I know Joyce won't do it. I mean, I would leave the fresh third Joyce, richest woman Joyce, in the world life for a while. It. Won't do it. I'm just saying I would it. leave the life for a while she first. She won't do it. Mm -hmm. And then... She will not consider. And it won't just be... It won't be half, I know. It will be something. If you give half at once, it doesn't have the right impact. If you give it in little bits, has the right impact by yourself. Says Joyce. Seeing where your money is going to. Well, Mackenzie, you have a big heart and a big wallet. And a big heart. Mostly a big wallet. You're very courageous. <laughs> And moving on to uh, the number six story for this week. It's also a bittersweet one. It's sweet for the people that want this man to be punished for his alleged crimes. It's bitter for the people that feel like he might be innocent. R. Kelly has been... Um, hmm. Yes, there are 11 fresh charges of sexual assault um, placed on R. Kelly in Chicago. In February, he had one of aggravated sexual assault. This one is from three of his victims, uh, four of his victims, I beg your pardon, of which three of them are between the ages of 13 and 17. Okay. When he sexually assaulted them. He was a man, full grown man, when and this happened. He assaulted them. It's hard. To it's hard to think that R. Kelly would do this kind of thing because I, I'm actually a huge fan and seeing the story over the years how he's just had from one sexual assault to another. It's almost as if he doesn't. How was he doing it? Why wasn't he caught all those years? If you have a lot of money, you can do a lot of things. Like I mean, I, I feel I feel like he should have been brought out a long time ago. Now, just I'm just sad that he's ruining his career and his life. And Joyce wants him something was done to him and i'm hearing that he could get 30 years hopefully eventually when the case is a lot of lives have been destroyed a lot of young women's lives have been destroyed i mean i know the argument is out there that maybe he's innocent but i truly do not I believe think, so. i don't think that um, when you the have evidence like, is too staggering yeah, you have too many people coming out and saying that this guy did this thing and i mean all of them can be lying it can't just be against them there has to be some form of truth and then the documentary they had, The Surviving R. Kelly, it almost killed me. It shared the story of um, Alia, who they claim he married when she was about 15, and then oh forged marriage certificate to say that she was 18. Oh. And the person that helped him forge the certificate was there to say that, yes, I helped him forge the certificate. And then it was so many horrible why, why things. Why His brother now? was saying that it's not pedophilia, it's just his taste. He just likes them in the teens. What, what happened to 18-year-olds? What happened to 20-year-olds? Why does it have to be teens? They're the ones that, they're the ones that contacted is... herpes. Herpes does not have a cure, by the way. It's just, it goes on and on and on. It's just dirty, dark Sad. detail. And uh, this is where we draw the curtain on the first half of my face looking like this. Yeah. But I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of uh, number 10 to number 5. Our bonus story, of course, was Naira Mali being granted bail to the tune of 2 million Naira. And of course, there was the Nigerian man that found um, Tramadol in his slippers. slippers his friend gave him to take to the abroad i'm just saying why would you just <laughs> how would i gift you something and then you tear it oh my god i'm offended why you offended? Of his friend. What? trust me more oh god <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there is the japanese man that uh, died on a flight uh, with the 264 mm, packets of cocaine story. in his stomach and then there's john snow heading to rehab kit harrington we wish you a safe recovery safe we hope recovery. you feel better when you come out and then there's uh, Mackenzie Bezos just doing something I didn't understand. She's giving almost half of her um, divorce settlement to charity to the tune of about 17 billion dollars. Jesus Christ. That's bold of you. 17 million dollars. <laughs> and of course, R. Kelly getting a fresh 11 charges of a sexual assault. When we come back, we'll give you the top five stories for this week. Stick around. It's the weekend rundown on TSM on Jerry TV. Yeah. <laughs>
and we're back like we never left now on our number five story we have okay now suicide rate in nigeria has become too much now this guy apparently commits suicide because his girlfriend left him and now story is the girlfriend did not leave him Joyce, what do you have to say about this <laughs> i don't know why a guy would die because his girlfriend left him Life goes i know that i should not even be smiling because the whole thing is really really crazy now he's a student of last Tech, Laker state polytechnic and he's been dating the a young lady for nine years and she's apparently doing a youth service now, he went on Facebook Live to complain and cry and talk about how the government should scrap NYIC because that is the reason why his girlfriend left him. Hmm. But according to investigations by the police, the girlfriend says she didn't leave him. So why did he But the only reason why they even had issues was that he was fond of beating her. Oh, my God. And that hours before he killed himself, he had just finished beating oh her. Oh, boy. So he had issues. Clearly. It wasn't the girl. Clearly. Something is clearly wrong psychologically with him for him to go on Facebook and put that up. I mean, thank God. Sorry. Sad story. But thank God she wasn't there to witness it. It have been so sad. Uh, we're sending uh, love and light to, of course, his family who yeah. has just lost well, someone really no important to them. And I hope the, the girlfriend also recovers from this. Yeah, uh, it must really be such a weight thinking that a person goes out there to say that you're the reason why he decided to end his life. And plus, I think she would actually have still have feelings for him. So it's, it's still going to be Clearly. traumatic for her to, you know accept that he killed himself after they just had a really serious quarrel that is just immensely sad yeah. i'm moving on to things happening in nigeria now may 29 saw the inauguration of uh, several government officials including our president muhammad buhari the day was a very special day for nigeria for some reason there was a lot of rain in several places including mm -hmm. benin and yeah. lagos state while uh, babaji day sangu luke's inauguration was going on in lagos and now um uh, one of my favorite politicians is uh, Okorocha, I love him, man. He's okay. very vocal, <laughs> so I find him very entertaining. Okay. Anyways, a day after he steps down after being governor, him and his wife were picked up by the EFCC. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, they never allowed the man to drink water and talk. Like waiting for him to just Someone cannot just relax. Him. Somebody cannot be. They don't even allow him do vacation or something <laughs> like that. You just can't pick him out. It's not. It's wrong. <laughs> it's not. It's wrong. It's not good. Like they were waiting for him to just hand over as he was just handing over saying you know, his, his immunity is over now so he can be treated like an ordinary citizen can be investigated <laughs> wow okay moving on to more sad stories now there are a couple of things that america has grown to be known for the bowed ego the love for baseball the weird game american football that I probably should be illegal or something but why happening. because of cte concussions in the head they run mad eventually do you not see that movie about cte it was um, Will Smith was the one that played. It was, a, it, was a, it was a true life story about an Nigerian doctor that discovered CTE. I can't pronounce CTE. It's really, really long. I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> Anyways, it's something that American football players suffer when they keep having concussions. You know, mm. they head butts into each other. And it's really, really... So apparently when the concussions keep going, they have something called CTE. It's kind of like... Um, they say the brain is in a cup. How, it, how he described it was you put the brain as like an apple in a jar then you put water into the jar then you keep shaking it mm. so the apple is hitting the sides of the jar so eventually it's going to crack so he says that the apple is the brain and the jar is the skull so with each concussion the brain is doing things it really and so it damages the person's brain eventually they run mad and stuff and mm. it says a lot of football players are prone to it how did we get here the news america yes anyways apart from american football and uh, the bald eagle and or the amazing things America is known for. More recently, they have been known for something called mass shootings in schools, in malls, almost road, every other the month. Streets, everywhere. Almost every other month, there is a brand new story of a mass shooting. Now, one just happened in a Virginia Beach in Virginia. The man was apparently working in the municipal office and he was a disgruntled employee. He pulled out a gun that he bought illegally by the way took it to work and shot a couple of people 12 people died four people are still in the hospital and he finally died after a shootout with the police now a lot of democrats versus conservatives have been fighting to put proper gun control in america but the conservatives are fighting for their rights to own guns while the other group is saying that you do not need to own a gun for any reason okay. now mass shootings has been so frequent in america that you see schools giving students drills on what 
to do when there is a school it's shooting. Involved, yeah. America. What's happening? What's going on? Anyways, we're sending love and light, of course, to the families of the people that lost people in this more recent mass shootings. And we hope that maybe one day something will be done about the gun laws in the United States. Now, moving on to something that is also immensely sad, that also happened in the United States. This story is going to blow your mind. Now, a few weeks ago, I told you guys about a father that set his daughter on fire. Do you remember that story? Yeah locked her in the car and set the car on fire and it was everything now this is some this is a story about a young girl called malia davis now on the 4th of may the entire world was alerted that a young girl was missing she's about four years old her name is malia davis and the mother was looking for her now according to the story her mother's fiance told the police that the child was abducted that he was in the car with his own child and malia davis when two hispanic men like hispanic men are like uh latinos sort of Spanish people stopped them and took the girl into a van and knocked him out and he was unconscious for almost 24 hours and then he went to the hospital and a lot of stories so there's been constant search for the young girl especially on social media now uh, more stories have been unraveled the mother's lawyer went to visit the man who is a suspect in jail and a lot of his stories do not add up first of all he said he walked to the hospital but the footage from the hospital showed that he was dropped off in a car to the hospital hmm. and then there was some more footage from his house that showed him carrying out um a trash bag oh. outside his house and then coming back with cleaning agents including bleach oh. now bleach is a substance that is commonly used to remove blood stains and now after his lawyer visited him after his girlfriend's lawyer visited him in jail he confessed that he was he killed the girl by accident that oh the baby God. died by accident and then he drove from texas to Arkansas and threw her body on the side of the road in a bag oh now the police God. have found a bag with child remains inside it and they've flown it out for forensics to find out if that is the body of the missing girl Sad. So what, what, what couldn't just have said he did it by mistake or something? How do you tell a person, hi, um, I, I know, funny okay, story, okay, now, I killed your child by accident. At the end of the day, it's the same thing now. We're back to, is, he probably How do you kill a child by accident? He needs to explain and Apparently that the, the child's body was dismembered. Do you know how, how horrible of a human being you have to be to dismember a child? How did he do it? Wait, how did he find the mind and the heart? You're looking for an easy way to... Today's if you watch enough movies, you know how to dispose of a body. I basically can learn anything online right now, so... Sad. I mean, I could teach you. This, I, I I don't, it's I don't, in all the movies. I don't want to learn. It's literally... They make it look so easy. I don't want to learn. I could pick out five movies where you were told to dismember the body. I know. And put it in a bag. I, I can, I can, you, you're bringing more to memory. I don't want to think about it. Should we ban movies from doing that? I think... I mean, the only reason I even know that bleach moves, moves blood stain is from movies. No, I, I found out that, that from someone, a medical person. I didn't know. I saw it in the movies, like, as soon as you clean, oh my God, get bleach. This, this, this. Yeah, once you, up, you, once, you in the pour, once you pour bleach on, the, on blood, it I feel like we're telling people what we should not be saying. <laughs> so let's move on to uh, the number one story of the day. Now, this one, I really, really love it. And Angel is going to take us on this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. But you guys remember one time where animals were really terrorizing us exactly, in this country? Exactly, money. Snake swallowed money. A monkey ran away with money. I don't know how that happened. People we have caught the snake. We've caught the snake, apparently. <laughs> yes. Now, do we remember? We all remember the story in August um, 2014 when uh, the, jam, the, the a lady was um, arrested that she said five million naira was missing. Now, she said it's the snake swallowed the money. Apparently, she's a jam official. Her name is Philomena Sheshi. And she, was, she said that snake swallowed the money. But now she has been arraigned as a suspect. The snakes have been found. She has two accomplices with her who helped her to siphon this cash. They were used to sell, they were cards, money they used to sell the jam CBT cards for students to register. Now, all the cash that were coming in were being siphoned. Apparently, these guys were auditors helping her take the money. Now, they've been taken to court and their case is right now in court. So, Joyce, the snake has been found. So, her two accomplices were not snakes? Uh, wait, no, wait, it's not snakes. She said a snake swallowed it. So I figured now, that the accomplice of the snake would be other snakes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how people are just taking money free of charge and stealing it and saying that animals are stealing it for them. We apologize to all snakes affected by this. 
<laughs> Sorry for being slandered. It must have been a trying time in Snake Kingdom <laughs> when all of this happened. All right, so this is our top five stories for this week. At number five, we have the young um, the young man, 34 years old from Las Botec, who killed himself because his girlfriend allegedly left him I don't due to understand. NYSC. We had the EFCC arresting ex governor um, Okorocha. After they, they just couldn't wait. Just a day after he steps down they as the governor. Wait. And then we have a mass shooting in Virginia that claimed 12 lives with four people in the hospital. And of course, the gunman has been killed. And Amalia Davis, a young girl that was accidentally killed by her mother's boyfriend. And of course, finally, uh, the jambo official who has been arrested for the siphoning of 36 million naira yeah. for the sales of jam cards. And we have come to the end of the show. Oh. I can't say. We just like to apologize for all the sad stories today. Yes. We really wish we had a lot of happier stories. A lot of stories. exciting stories. But, but a lot of sad things happened this week and we just hope that the world find the healing that yeah. the world needs. And speaking of healing, we'll be here to heal your heart on Monday on The Breakfast Show on yeah. TSM Android TV. We went around on Friday for The Breakfast Show because we had something amazing happening in the yeah. studio. Our advance into school oh, debate competition finally came to an end and we found ourselves a winner. Yeah. On Monday, we will be back on your phones, your screens, your laptops, your TV sets, each and every device to use in watching us from 10 a.m. for the breakfast show on TSM Nigeria TV. My name is George Church. And I'm Adriel Omoy Day. Bye-bye.